Good. All right. Let's start. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Theodore. I'm the director of Idea Statica UK. And this is another Connection Wednesdays webinar. Uh, Connection Wednesdays has uh, become uh, our regular meeting point since last June. And we're really happy to see all the people that continuously joining our webinars and, of course, all the new participants we have in every webinar. Uh, the feedback that we have uh, received mainly from our users has been really good uh, and this is exactly what gives us the motive to continue orga organizing these events. Um, in every webinar, uh, we want to show something different and we always want to make it more interesting. And uh, for any of you that has been following us uh, since the beginning, you will probably know that we have uh, pretty much covered all the main aspects of the software. And we have showed you how to use all the main tools to model and design a connection. Of course, if you are new to these uh, webinars, you can always find uh, uh, all the, the, the previous webinars on our website or the, the YouTube channel. So this time we want to focus on something different uh, and we want to demonstrate how Idea Statica can help the engineer uh, to deal with a real design problem and more importantly, uh, based on a real customer example. So in a few words, we want to focus on the essence of the software and not so much on how to use all the different tools, uh, which you have probably have seen uh, extensively in the previous webinars. Uh, before I introduce our presenter, uh, I just want to mention a couple of things uh, about uh, go to webinar in case you haven't used it in the past. So on the right side of the screen, you can see a control panel, uh, which you can use to enter any questions that you have during the webinar. So uh, anything that you want to ask, just feel free to write it uh, in this chat box and we will answer them as we go along. So today our presenter is uh, Kostis, our support manager, uh, who is going to demonstrate uh, this customer example. And before I switch uh, over uh, my screen, uh, allow me to give you a bit of background on this project. Uh, this is a big industrial project, and uh, as you can see uh, in the drawing, uh, it is uh, over 130 meters high. Uh, so you can imagine that this is a quite complex structure and uh, the whole structure, including this specific connection that we're going to investigate today, uh, has been already uh, has been uh, already constructed. Now, the problem with this project was after the initial analysis that was made, uh, which, of course, led to this uh, to the initial design. Uh, a new analysis was needed because of, uh, of an omission in the initial calculations. So the new calculations included two uh, new disproportional uh, diagonals that were needed in order to, uh, so that the structure can handle the forces. Um, of course, uh, these diagonals needed to be combined with the existing structure. So the design needed to, to take uh, into account the existing steps. The solution uh, was to reinforce the stub with stiffening plates and, of course, to, to create the necessary space to connect the two diagonals. Uh, and this, is, this was quite tricky because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this was at a really high uh, uh, level, so uh, the, there was no option, let's say, to, to replace all these, uh, all these elements. Now, uh, this is the, uh, as you can see in this slide, this is the initial state uh, with just a small I section. And this is the final stage uh, with all the reinforcing plates that have been added. And this is something that, uh, of course, uh, Kostis will show to you uh, uh, right after. So having said all that, um, let me switch over my screen uh, so that Kostis can show you in detail uh, this example and uh, explain it uh, a little bit more. With this, you have the uh, screen and the microphone. 
Well, uh, Gustis, we cannot hear you. There seems to be some kind of audio problem. Uh, we can see your screen, but we cannot hear you. How about now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, it seems that GoToMeeting is adjusting automatically the settings, so <laughs> this is what happens right. when... <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, so uh, you... okay guys, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Um, now, I will take it from Theodore. And uh, like Theodore said, in this webinar, we will try to focus on the meaningful details and the concepts behind the connections and not the boring stuff. So here I already have my members oriented. Um, you can see here that uh, the highlighted member named C was the initial column that was supposed to be connected to a short stub already installed at our structure after after its erection. Now the first thing we did was to define this stub here and we did this with a feature you can find in our software, I'm sorry, which is our general cross-section editor. Um, here in this editor, you can see the HEA 140 section with the red outline. And you can clearly see the welded plates that form a solid foundation for our connection. So let's close this dialog. And let's go and start defining our connection here. Now the connection is naturally divided into distinct parts and these parts are connected with two end plates. These end plates are connected at column C and at our newly created stub right here. And before connecting the diagonals, I need to move members, I need to move the diagonals along the rakes a little bit, which is something that we will discuss later in order to show you the importance of this translation and why we're doing it. Let's go back to the design. Um, next, we are creating a bolt grid and uh, this bolt grid is positioned at the holes that were originally provided by the initial design. And after that, I need to create a gusset and to connect member B1. Now, um, a really thick gusset is introduced for connecting the diagonals because huge forces are transmitted and uh, as you already saw, column C is really weak. So to make sure that column C is not overstressed, we introduce this uh, thick gusset. And of course, we will later verify this claim that uh, column C is not overstressed. Next, I will cut the gusset by using the diagonal. And uh, this cut also provides an allowance of 10 millimeters. After that, we, we introduce two cover plates in our diagonal. As you can see, these cover plates are bolted at the diagonal flanges. And then we will notch and weld these diagonals at our gusset. 
Now remember that we moved the member along its axis and I think that now it is clear why I had to move the member because I needed some space for my cover plates to be welded here. Now we have to, again we have to connect our B2 diagonal. For this I will introduce a second thick gusset plate. Again I will cut this gusset and I will, we will have an allowance of 10 millimeter for member B2. Again we will introduce two cover plates. They are also bolted the flanges of member B2 and again we are cutting, we're notching and welding them. Uh, another thing that's interesting about this model in Idea Statica is uh, that we have the option once the model is defined to move member around and the model will be automatically adjusted. Now, as an example, I will use the member B2 diagonal. Now, let's say that I want to move my diagonal closer to member C for some reason. So here, I can go and change the distance and you can see that the diagonal is moved and the geometry is automatically adapted if I have a correct definition. Uh, there. Last, we will introduce the remaining bolts to connect the two end plates. Now, what's important in cases like this is uh, that we must um, we must make sure that we take into account the exact loading conditions that were used in the initial global model. This is really easy in Idea Statica because we can apply uh, the full stress vector that was calculated in our global model. And after we also introduce the load, it's easy to calculate our connection. I will go with the file that I have this connection already solved and after the solution with our overall check we, we can see the status of our connection components at a glance. So we can clearly see here that our thick gussets remain at the elastic region because we know because they are gray and this is something that uh, we wanted to do since uh, we uh, since um, we don't want to overstress the weak column. Uh, we can also see that the weak column has a green color, which means that it passes all checks. And we can also see uh, that the welds of the cover plates are orange, meaning that they are stressed by over 95 percent. Uh, from the overall, from the visualization of the overall check, we can see that our connection, uh, that the design, the proposed design is adequate. We can also further investigate a little bit and we can check where plasticity is introduced in our cross-section. So we can uh, see the distribution of the strain check and we can see that plasticity is introduced where, where we expect it to be and this is at the flanges of the connected diagonals around the bolt holes it is introduced at the region of the weld and of course at the weak column. Uh, 
also this plasticity is introduced from the side of the huge diagonal where the huge force is transmitted. Another thing that is also interesting is the distribution of the von Mises stress. Again, we have an interesting distribution of stresses around the bolt holes at the region of the welds. And of course, at the weak column web. Of course, the von Mises stress can be a little bit misleading because in steel yielding does not mean failure. The ultimate check for this is our strain check, which shows that, uh, that the strain, uh, that the plastic strains are below the code provided limit of uh, 5%. Another meaningful result is a uh, buckling factor, which for this case is 16.70 and shows that our structure is adequate. Now that I have shown you uh, this connection, I will also go and show you another position from the same project. Now let me go back and switch our solids view. And here you can see the same weak column at the top. Here we can see that uh, we have uh, uh, four members intersecting at secondary beam B. In the initial design of the project, only beam B and this small column existed. And after the redesign, we also have to introduce these diagon diagonals and this huge beam. Uh, now, with the use of Idea Statica, we were able to take into account the eccentricities of these diagonals uh, due to classes with other structure parts. And of course, we were able to assess uh, the connection with the overall check, with strain checks, and of course, the von misses stress distributions here. Now, what is important to note is that uh, all these connections were completely modeled in Idea Statica, not Tecla, not Advanced Steel. So, uh, to sum up, the remodeling of these connections would be impossible without the tools that are provided in Idea Statica. And these tools are the general cross-section tool, the fact that we were able to account for complex stress states, and of course, uh, our result evaluation tools that provide exact strain and exact stress distributions. So, I will move back okay. to Theodore for our Q and session. Um, okay, thank you, Kostis. I have, uh, we have a couple of questions that you might need to show on the example. Um, so if you switch back to uh, the first one, uh, there is a okay. question from, from Richard that says, can you please clarify how you can cut the gasset plate to member B1? Yes, of course. Let me go at the design. So we, we use a cutoff plate, but we're using the uh, but we're using the actual member to cut this plate. I think uh, the operation is this one. 
Let me go back at the solids. Yes, so it's a cut-off plate, and we're using a member B1 to cut the gasset, and we have an allowance of 10 millimeters here. Okay. okay. Uh, and another question from Jamie is, uh, please show PCAT 8. Um, PCAT 8 is the notching and welding of the members. Again, this is a cut of plate, but uh, the key point here is to use a notch. So I'm using a notch here, and at the same time, I'm welding it at the gasket. If I, let me touch this a little bit. This is SPL3, as you can see here. And this is with one. And the key point is this, I have to use the notch. Um, right. Another one? <clears throat> um, yes, we have another question from Nan. Uh, do we need to check backlink for every connection? How to check it? Yes, we need to check backlink for every connection. Uh, this is a part of our method. And to check the backlink, you have to be here at the check tree item. And after you have performed the calculation of the cross section, you press this arrow here, this combo box, and you press the stress strain backlink. Uh, after buckling check is performed, you can see here the critical factor. Okay, uh, for more information on this, you can refer to our theoretical background section named stability analysis. Uh, I think we have uh, also a webinar on buckling analysis uh, in the past, so uh, you can always uh, go back to this webinar. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, there is much more information on Buckley. Um, okay. Um, let me just check if we have another. Uh, yes, uh, just uh, one more question on Buckley. What is the limit of the Buckley factor? Okay. Uh, the limit. Uh of the buckling factor is three for local modes of failure, uh, which is, uh, I think that it's most of the cases in connection, but uh, there is also another value of 15 for global modes of failure. Now, a global mode of failure is, uh, is a mode of failure that will influence the rest of your structure. So you need to know this. Actually, you have to be, to, you must have designed, uh, you, must, you must have uh, some, uh, let's say, information about the global analysis of the structure to do this. Okay. Right. But generally, it's, it, it's three. Uh, I propose to refer back to our theoretical background for this because uh, this information is there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't see <clears throat> any other question. Um, and I think we're almost, yeah, uh, it's, yeah it's 30 minutes, so I think we can conclude. Um, of course, we can. Um, answer any questions you might have, you can send it to us through email, of course, uh, after the webinar. So let me just switch back to my screen. Okay, so we have pretty much covered the, the questions. Um, Yeah, and uh, for any of you who haven't used Idea Statica before, uh, I would strongly recommend to download our free trial uh, uh, for 
14 days. Uh, this will allow you, of course, to see uh, firsthand the, this, this exciting new technology uh, of Idea Static, and you can test it with your own projects. Um, so I think we can we can now conclude our webinar. Uh, it has been a great pleasure having you all here again, and we appreciate a lot the time that you took to attend uh, the webinar. And if you found it interesting, of course, you can join us uh, for the next one. It will be on February 21st. Uh, I think the link to the registration will be soon announced on the website. And uh, if you have, uh, <clears throat> if you are using the software already and you would like uh, to present one of your examples in the future, uh, you can send it to us at helpdesk at ideastatica.com and we will we'll be very happy to, to present it. So, again, thank you very much, and we hope to see you again really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.